Hello and welcome to this podcast produced by the AIC, the Association of Investment Companies. The AIC is the UK trade association for the closed-ended investment company industry. And for the duration of this podcast, we'll be discussing the advantages investment companies present for generating income. And joining me now is the AIC's communications director, Annabel Brody smith Annabel, welcome. Hello. Um, hi. So, so first off, um, why would people consider choosing, why should they consider choosing an investment company for income? Okay, well, an investment company um, is a collective investment. That means when you invest in an investment company, it's a company listed on the stock exchange, but you're getting access to a portfolio managed by a professional fund manager of shares and other assets like property and infrastructure and all sorts of assets. So it's basically you're not putting all your uh, eggs in one basket, but getting a collective investment. And they have strong long-term performance. So, for example, if you'd invested in the average investment companies, a thousand pounds over ten years, you'd have just under one thousand eight hundred pounds. Um, so, it's strong long-term performance, but also they have special advantages when it comes to income. Okay, now tell me about some of those advantages and, and maybe one or two of the disadvantages as well. Okay, well, they, they have a structural advantage. So, an open-ended fund has to pay out all of their income to their shareholders, the, the unit holders, every year, which they receive from the companies they invest in. But an investment company can retain up to 15% of that income. They can literally tuck it away for a rainy day in their revenue reserve and then when times are tough, and one thing that we can guarantee in the financial world and markets is times do get tough. So, for example, if BP has an oil spill or, you know, we all live through the banking crisis when banks cut their dividends. And quite recently, actually, we've seen some big FTSE companies cutting their dividends. They can retain that, that money that they've squirreled away and they can use it to boost up their dividends. So we have investment companies that have an extremely long track record of paying increasing dividends every year. So this is for people who are thinking, Annabelle, long term about their Absolutely. investments. Absolutely. These are long term investments. They are, are companies. They have Obviously, they are listed on the stock market. So they are companies you're having access to the stock market. So people have to think long term. And we recommend that people don't invest in an investment company unless you know you don't need access to your money for at least five years and actually preferably 10 years. Do we, do we as a nation, do we think enough long term we're um, notoriously a little short term when it comes to our investments and savings are are we are we not seeing enough of that um, I think it's there? a real shame that we don't think more long term and I think now with the pension freedom changes where we all really are gaining responsibility for saving for our retirement we are going to have to think long term. Um, but it's it's a frustration for us that for example when markets fall um private investors still have a tendency to sell their investments, whereas, of course, they should just hold on because over the long term, all the research shows that over the long term, the stock market outperforms cash in the bank or building society. So clearly some advantages there, but what are the things that people need to be wary of when they when they go for an investment like this? Well, they need to be aware. They, first of all, they need to think, have I got my rainy day cash in the bank? Um, because, you know, this, as I said, this is not a short term investment. You have to be prepared to put that money away for the long term. And obviously it is access, access in the stock market. So that the value of that company can go up as well as down. And you have to be prepared to ride out that level of volatility. And in, when we're talking about income, the level of income is not guaranteed. It's not like a deposit account or that kind of saving. Um, the income is going to be dependent partly on the performance of the portfolio of that investment company. Now, Annabelle, you, you've um, got a, you know, a strong reputation in the industry, well known, and you've talked on the circuit about dividend heroes. Tell us a bit about that. What, what, what are well, the dividend the heroes? The dividend heroes are actually those companies which have managed to increase their dividend year in, year out through good times and bad. So, for example, if I tell you that City of London Investment Trust is this year, very very shortly, celebrating paying 50 years of increasing 
dividends, then you get the picture. That's remarkable. How do they manage that? Well, literally, through my explanation, they literally just tuck away that income uh, each year. um, And when times are tough, they use the income they've tucked away to boost up the dividends they pay out to their shareholders. Now, what sort of alternative assets do investment companies invest in uh, when we're thinking about income? Well, this is another advantage of the investment company structure because it's closed-ended and that means there's a fixed number of shares in issue. So for everyone who buys a share, somebody on the other side is selling it to them. Um, As a result of that, they can invest in more uh, liquid, so less easy to sell and buy types of assets. So, for example, property or infrastructure projects, schools, hospitals, roads. These are, again, more long-term, more steady. Very long-term sources of income, absolutely. So property, obviously, the rental income from commercial property, um, specialist types of debt, um, also, we've even seen some companies um, peer to, investing in peer-to-peer loans and lending in this sphere. And because they can take that long-term view, they can invest in these types of investments that uh, um, open-ended companies, some of them will really struggle to invest in. And of course, those types of investments can give you a long-term strong stream of income. But I imagine their investments, as you've already referred to, that are less easy for an individual to to wind themselves out of. It's that long-term view that they need to be taking, especially with infrastructure. Absolutely, an individual needs to take a long-term view. But also, I mean, it is... A, a, if you if you're a person who wants access to that types of alternative assets, and perhaps you've already built up a portfolio of more traditional equity investments, and you're looking for something to add a bit more to that, then that is a great way, and probably one of the few ways you can access those types of investments through an investment company. Okay, so what sort of investment company? pays income out of capital profits, slightly right. different thing. Now, this is another advantage of the investment company structure. So they can pay income out of their capital profits. Now, I have to say, although a lot of companies have taken out the ability to do this, in fact, it's only used by quite a select number, particularly the venture capital trusts and private equity investment companies. Now, venture capital trusts invest in very small up-and-coming businesses. um, And when they sell those companies, obviously, that's a helpful way for them to distribute the uh, money to their shareholders is through income. So they're paying income out of their capital profits. In addition, private equity investment companies, a very similar scenario. They're investing in bigger unquoted companies. Um, And some of those pay income out of capital profits, not all, I have to say. There are also a couple of more traditional equity type investment companies who can do it. For example, British Assets or Securities Trust of Scotland. But there are really only a couple of those. So it's quite clear there's plenty to think about here and a a, a wide world of uh, opportunity. Um, How can, how should people go about researching investment companies? Well, first of all, I think they need to think about their risk profile. It is a stock market investment for them. Uh, Do they have that safe rainy day money in the bank for any crisis over the short term that could occur? Um, After that, I think they need to think about whether they're looking for income or capital or combination of the two. And obviously, we've been talking about income today, but some will provide income and capital or solely income. Then um, I think they need to go and have a look at the various sectors, decide which sort of sector. So if you're um, new to investing, you might be looking at a UK sector. So for example, UK equity income, as we're talking about income, or global, global equity income. But if you're a more experienced investor, you might be looking at some of the more specialist sectors, such as infrastructure or property. Um, And then once you've got to that decision, you'd need to take a look at the performance Pers- uh, the strong long-term performance. Personally, I like to look at performance over discrete, that's year-on-year periods, so you can see how that manager has performed in different years, in different stock market conditions, and the manager performance is obviously, and the manager's record is very important, and you'd have a look at that too. 
Um, specifically to investment companies, you'd have a look at the discount, which is really the market sentiment towards that company, and have a look at that in comparison to the sector average, but also perhaps the history of that company. And you'd also have a look at something called gearing, which is the borrowings that that investment company has. Again, comparing it to the sector average, make sure that you'd be happy with the amount of money that is, is being borrowed in terms of your risk level, because obviously more money that's borrowed, the more risk you're taking on. Although the average for the comp investment company industry is pretty moderate, actually, it's only about 7%. Um, and, and we've talked a lot about dividends. Some of our companies pay dividends quarterly. Some of them pay them twice a year. Some of them pay them monthly. So for an income investor, that might be very, very important. Of course, if you're not comfortable with any of this, if you have any doubts, you should seek financial advice and talk to a financial advisor. Okay, fascinating subject. Um, much to, to think on as well. Annabelle Brody smith Communications Director with the AIC. Thank you. Uh, and you can find out more about this topic and many others uh, that the Association of Investment Companies covers by going to www.theaic.co.uk. This podcast is for information only and does not constitute investment advice or a personal recommendation, and it is not an invitation for inducement to engage in investment activity. You should seek independent financial and, if appropriate, legal advice as to the suitability of any investment mentioned here. AIC Information Services Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Association of Investment Companies, has taken all reasonable steps to verify the information contained in this podcast but does not accept responsibility for any errors or omissions or for losses of any nature incurred by any person acting or refraining from action in reliance on such information. Please refer to the aic.co.uk forward slash important hyphen information for further information regarding our disclaimer policy and the contents of this podcast. Published by AIC Information Services Limited, a company registered in England and Wales. Registered number 0191053.